the Isle of Mull uh, to do a Highland Games, and um, this is my first one, and I'm looking forward to it. I'll be going through most of the series uh, in the Highland Games all over the uh, Scottish Highlands, and um, it's my first year as a professional. Um, so it's really a trial year for me, and I'm looking forward to meeting people like Grant Anderson, Hamish Davison, uh, Bill Anderson, the great all-time old man. <laughs> I'm a young man, so um, probably in uh, the next couple of years I'll learn most of the traditional events and give them a headache. But I think in the first year, he'll be beating me fair and square. Well, the motivation is obviously uh, after doing 20 years of amateur athletics, 15 years in the national team, been all around the world, um, three Olympic Games, three Commonwealth Games, 67 internationals. I've got to start looking for other motivation, as you say, and uh, the Highland Games is the obvious place to go because uh, this is where all the traditional events like shot put started. I've never been here, and obviously there's a professional circuit there, and um, I'm looking forward to um, competing in, in a traditional um, happy-go-lucky atmosphere rather than the, the, uh, the strict training regime of the Olympic Games movement. I chose Tiddlywinks, couldn't I? Yeah. You know, with manhole covers. But, no, I wanted this new challenge, and I looked around and I said, professional games. Because Arthur Rowe before me, um, who was European champion, uh, one of the greatest shoppers ever lived, took on and beat the best in the Highland Games. Anderson is a legend. Uh, to me, he's one of the greatest athletes in his own chosen field. He's the best. Then there's Hamish. He's super strong. I mean, he's one of these natural guys. I think he is the, the man to beat in the future. Because he's mastered the techniques. And then you've got Grant Anderson. Uh, Grant Anderson is an ex Commonwealth weightlifter. So he's really transferring his power into the Highland Games. So I think he will with Hamish be the guy to beat in the next two or three years. Bill can't go on forever. I think he's got to realise this fact. He's 43 now, so he's getting on. Uh, unless he proves me wrong and comes out again and again and again, which they do. But with Bill and Grant and Hamish there, you've got three champions in their own right. hypochondriacs <laughs> you know I mean I'm complaining of backache all the time and I don't know what he's got problem he's got he's got no problems at all <laughs> he's got knee problems and head problems you know <laughs> but I, I think Bill's right you know I mean <clears throat> I find it uh, very difficult to throw some of the Highland events anyway and uh, I'm learning this year next year I hope to do a lot better but as I go on I tend to get better as, it, as um, each meeting comes on um, I think Bill must use it as a training session every meeting, you know, because I don't think he'd do a lot of training there. 
the more games you do, the better you get, the more stamina you seem to have. I find that a little bit. Because uh, once did eight games on the trot, and I found out that after the eighth game I was better than I was at the one that started. So I don't really think it's a stamina problem. The first ten years of my working life was working on the farm. But that didn't correspond well with my games activities, so I had to change my job and go into the construction, which, well, you're paid by the hours, so you're allowed off any time you like. Well, I was always interested in the heavy events. I always thought of these big, strong men when I was a young boy, you know, throwing weights about. And then there was hammers and weights about the farm, so I just learned it through them. The way things have been over the last oh, 25 years, I had an easy spell in the late 50s and early 60s, and then uh, got a lot of hard competition from Arthur Row, and then I had a, quite an easy spell again. And then things are harder now with uh, Hamish Davison and Grant Anderson, and now Jeff Capes has come up, so things are getting really tough. I'm enjoying it more now than I maybe was 20 years ago. I don't know why that is, but I think I'm enjoying it more. I don't think there's so much strain now. There was quite a bit of strain on earlier on in this uh, Scotland-England thing when Arthur Rowe was in the goal. And uh, I hope that that doesn't materialise again. I have very small hands, because I'm not really a small person anyway. I was... <laughs> oh, that's a very small person! <laughs> if I hadn't trained on the weights, I'd still be a sort of 11 stone weakling. It's all been developed over the years. What weight were you before you started? Uh, about the 10 stone mark, that's that, 15. That was at birth. <laughs> <laughs> you would have never been at 10 stone mark, you were just far too broad for that. You must have been, weight must be, uh, with, uh, must be 12 to 13 would be your normal weight. Definitely not 10. No, maybe not No, 10. no. But well, I was so. drinking 20 pints of beer and all that, you know what I mean? I'm not saying anything like it. <laughs> games get into your blood. Bye -bye. It's part of your life. I started Highland Games uh, about the age of 17 or 18. I can't remember. I was shot putting in school before then. Well, I'm a hill farmer. I uh, keep a uh, stock of black-faced ewes and also, I've heard of uh, white mink and pastels, about 1,500 animals in the farm at the moment. Everything's done at home now. Uh, I just step out the back door, I'm into the concrete circle, shop putting. Then I go into the barn, I'm doing weights. Everything. I've got all my own facilities. Way over the barn, the cable, the, the height's in it, and the hammer as well, the height's in advantage. That's if you're able to throw properly, which I'm not. <laughs> I only found out yesterday I was holding the bloody thing all wrong. <laughs> I said, well, that's not right, because I hold my hands like this, and I thought, well, you've been doing it for 20 years or so, and it must be bloody right. So I changed my grip straight away and threw less. <laughs> oh! birds and um, you know I'm as competitive in that as ever you know I'll get to a show and if I'm showing if I don't win I want to know why I didn't win you know yes. Yeah. 
Get your fingers way behind it, lock on before you change. Get that change of speed. As soon as your right foot hits, change it round. Okay, foot knee hip, left foot down, put over it before you change it. Uh, I'm, I'm a great believer that if you've done it, Good girl, fine. if you've actually taken part and thrown and felt the event, you should be a, a reasonable coach. I find that they are me. They are an extension of what I used to be. And I think within the next two or three years, Susan King will be British champion. Okay? Okay. Nothing else. Nothing else. Just your fingers. You're lifting the spine because you're jumping into it. Get that force going through the shot. Get nasty. Push. Well, they weren't too bad just now. I've seen them far worse. In fact, after a few games, you've seen them. We've seen the split here, here, again, four or five different places. It's not too bad. Not too bad just now. Is that on the other hand as well? No, no, no. He's got the worst calories. He's got the worst Grant's worst for it, too. Why is that, Grant? I do more training. No, no, I'll tell you what it is. He's used to office work. His hands are soft, you see. He throws no way to tears him up. He's not used to hard work, is he? That's exactly what uh, it is. I'm a town planner, basically a sedentary occupation, so it leaves all your physical energy anyway for training. I have a fairly unusual diet which I picked up from the weightlifting body and bodybuilding field, which is basically a liquid high-protein diet, which consists of skim milk, uh, high-protein like Castellan, uh, eggs, things like that. Well, if I do miss having real food, I'll go and have some. Well, I used to be a weightlifter, Olympic-type weightlifter, but I got too injured to do it, to, to continue weightlifting. So I, I was just at a loose end when one of the Highland Games guys was looking for somebody to train with, so I started training with him. Discovered I was better than him, so I continued competing. The heavyweight events of the Highland Games are all about throwing. Each event involves a different technique, but they all demand a combination of strength, speed and timing. Bill is recognized as our best hammer thrower of all time, but he's a great all-rounder and doesn't have a really weak event. Hamish is the strongest man on the circuit, and he's the best weight for distance thrower we've got, and he's a good shot putter. Jeff's a great shot putter, he's great at the weight over the bar, and very strong in the caber and the weight for distance, although his technique needs some improvement. I'm quite good at the weight over the bar, at least I thought I was until Jeff came on the scene. Hammer-wise, I might be knocking at Bill's door. Caber-wise, I'm the current world champion, so I shouldn't be too bad at that. The championships of a games is usually decided on a system of points accumulated over seven events. There's the 22 pounds and the 16 pound putts, the 22 and the 16 pound hammers, the 28 pound weight for distance, the 56 pound weight over the bar, and of course the caber, which has nothing to do with distance, but is judged on straightness. If you think of it in terms of a clock, 12 o'clock would be the perfect throw. Good afternoon, the chairman of the Kreef Highland Gathering. Could you please tell me the forecast for tomorrow for a Creef Perthshire? Uh, not a bad day. Probably rather cloudy at times. Um, the odd light shower, but I think any shower you do get will be very light and fairly scattered. Creef, I always thought, was the, the, the best games in Scotland, I think. They were the ones that everybody would have liked to win because it's called the Scottish Championships. Yes, there's been a happy hunting ground for me, but then uh, so has a few more places been happy hunting grounds for me. My idea 
of, of uh, competing is A, you're first, you've got into it. Uh, B, you, I want to win. I also don't want to take part. I tend not to get very worked up for these things anyway, which is probably a mistake. You know, I think you, you perform a lot better if you get a bit more aggressive, but I, I probably fall down a bit there. I think the records excite me more than anything. Also, uh, titles, the money helps. You wouldn't do it for no money, obviously. Result of putting the 22 pound weight first with a new ground and Scottish record of 52 feet one and a half inches, Jeff Capes. Second, Hamish Davidson, 48 feet. Bullet, you don't pull a tape, you stretch that. 
That's why it's not metal. Yeah. It's quite elastic, as you call it. of event number 11, putting the 16 pound weight, first with a new ground and Scottish record of 61 feet 6 and a half inches, Jeff Capes. Yeah, I knew it was about bloody time. Second, Hamish Davidson, <laughs> I've been 56 feet. Pratting about all year, you know, well, getting used to the grass and everything, it's, it's not like concrete as I said initially, you know, it's just... Uh, Amazing how much it takes out of your actual force on the throw, you know. It's better than watching Dundee or Dundee United, isn't it? <laughs> Even on a bad day. <laughs> well, they always have a bad day, don't they, do you? I stopped seeing them when they sold Jimmy Gabriel in 1958. <laughs> All right, we'll just go. Oh, it's a heavy weight, I don't like it. Uh, well, it's not the same weight I set the record up with, and uh, as a doer sort of thing. I'll throw it a wee bit further. But... No. I think you've done enough to get it. We'll see what Jeff does. That's all that's up there now, I think. I'm still leading uh, Grant there by a few feet. Oh, come on, I've got to concentrate. And next to go is the 25 feet for distances. Number 113. Jeff Oh, no, 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 no. Damn it, no. Throw. I was listening to what my mate said over there, you know. He said, faster, so I'll bloody wait in there faster, and I'll still pull back in. I don't like it at all. What's wrong? About 28. I've been throwing it badly, or else there's something far wrong with me. Uh, that's about 12 feet back in my right ear, dear. Uh, yes, throwing as I fear, not as I hope. <laughs> but, uh, you yeah. know. Well, the point is the points thing today, not winning, it? I mean, it's position, position, position. Now I've got two events, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to come last in the hammer. Well, Bill will be the favourite to win the hammers, but uh, I'm always hopeful. Grant's probably throwing quite well, and Hamish will be throwing quite well, I think, so it might be hard to say just how it'll go. Jeff's been home at the home practicing all week with the hammer, too. So, that's my three best events over. So, I'll have to try something on my lesser events. You're disappointed so far, yeah? Uh, ah, not too bad. No, what are you thinking? <laughs> thinking about something else completely. <laughs> Bill must be doing something wrong, I'm leaving. You know, he does two half-hearted throws, and then I just throw half-hearted. Then he throws a real throw. Enough? 
don't think so. I'm over a few inches short, I would think. But even that's it. Well, Bill miscalculated there. Oh, that kidology. Oh. Oh. He ended up being oh. too lethargic. <laughs> oh, you turkey. <laughs> 99 11 and a half, you mean sod. I'll give you 99 11 if you don't. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <mate. laughs> 99 11 and a half. Pass. This is 140 inches. Four inches. Drag Anderson. Second. Bill Anderson. Opening throw the second round of the light hammer. Pull it out this time, though. No, 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 no terrible. Way. Just getting excited. <laughs> we always dream about throwing it into the crowd at the far end of the park, but it never seems to go that far. <laughs> No, things are not going too well, but uh, still two throws yet. Hope they get a good one yet, surely. So, Hamish, hey, should really be going about again this time, too. He's got a good throw his last time. He seems to be trying a bit harder here. Well, he's, he's had a bit more gin. Some more gin. Uh, uh, help. Yes, Ron, but it's still. Good throw. Good throw. Uh. That's just coming up to show now we have Jeff average in the hammer. Um, it's just a question of doing your sums, isn't it? Let's see if, uh, if Jeff makes a mess of the weight over the bar in the cave where Grant can still win. Well, I'm, sticking I'm injured, so there's a obvious a probability of him beating me anyway. And we're trying to get the... That makes me two points behind Jeff now, so all on the cable. 
Who knows? He might break his leg again, you know. Yeah. No, 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 no. second just now. expected in fact and uh, it's all lips and butts but if I'd done a little bit better here and there you know I could have won so uh, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm not depressed no well, chance was there in the cable again too if I'd come in between them again then that would have been it too but it didn't happen no so straight for straight for Oh no, I don't like it. Uh, I've been off farm, I didn't expect to do too well unless I pulled out something spectacular. And it didn't happen. Uh, in terms of finance, you know, I think uh, we're worth a lot more money. You know? That's the personal uh, thing anyway. Maybe that'll change. I hope it'll change because, uh, you know, like everybody, I think, enjoyed you know, the championship and the competition. And, uh, I normally stand and stay for the caber. <laughs> 
I mean, this is it. That's the event. Not running around the track and cycling around the track. It's the Caber and the Highland Games and the heavy events. Plug for the throwers. The result of the Scottish Heavyweight Championship, first, Jeff Gates.